In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to use a gadget to easily create a perfectly sized rounded blank ready for rotary machining. This may be required if you don't already have a perfectly round blank or that we may be starting from a square stock. So now you can see this is where we're heading. Let's look at creating one of our own files ourselves. So if we go up to file and close. So let's go ahead and create that file. So if we go to create a new file and we're going to check our job setup sheet first. So first things first, let's make sure our job type is set to rotary. Our uh, job size is going to be a length of 12 inches with a diameter of three inches. Our Z zero position will be at the cylinder axis. The X, Y datum position will be in the lower left hand corner. The orientation will be along the X axis, which means we will wrap the Y values and the modeling resolution will be set to very high. I'm happy with that, so I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. So at this stage, I could make a finishing toolpath, but I know that my stock or the material that I'm working with is not actually currently the correct size, so I need to trim that down. Now, in VCAF Pro and Aspire, we actually have a great tool to help us accomplish this, which is called the Create uh, Rounding Toolpath uh, Gadget. So if you go up to Gadgets, Wrapping, Create Rounding Toolpath, and we'll click that and have a look at this form. So as you can see, it's opened up the form with a set of parameters that you can now change, but also with a, a brief description of the Create Running Toolpath itself. So let's have a look at some of these in further detail. So first is blank size and shape. So you've got two options here, and on the right-hand side, you have the option for a diameter of round blank. So this could be used, for example, if you had a round blank and it was just oversized to what you need it to be, you could trim this down by changing this value over here. But for the sake of this project, we're going to assume we have a square blank, which you want to round off by cutting away these corners. And I'm going to change this value to 3.25, which is just over the three inch diameter that I set in the job sheet. Uh, and this will be for finishing purposes. So below that, you can see various machining methodologies. We have radial, which is around the cylinder, uh, raster, which is along the cylinder, and optimized raster along the cylinder again, but machines off corners first. Well, this is for square blanks only, if you notice. And I've got this selected because we're assuming in this project we're using a square blank. Now, you could use these two options here if you were going to do something like a diameter of a round blank where you need to trim it down to the correct size and it's just oversized than what you need it to be. Uh, finally, we have the option to allow an allowance. So you could use this with a particularly coarse tool, for example, where you wanted to leave a little bit of stock so that you can do a, a semi-finishing pass, for example. But for now, we're actually going to use an end mill and go right down to the desired size. So with that, let's have a look at our tooling. So we're just going to go to select down here and choose our quarter inch end mill and click on select. And now you can see that change has been reflected over here where we've got an end mill selected under our tool option. And you'll notice that this is called the rounding toolpath. That is actually a default name. And if you did want to change this, you can actually change this to something that makes more sense for you. But at the moment, I think that makes a lot of sense for our current blank. So I'm gonna leave that as it is. And our cylinder dimensions have also been reflected here, if you recall, off of our job seat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK so we can now have a look at toolpathing uh, this rounded toolpath. So let's go up and look at our toolpath. So if we pop across the toolpath menu by clicking this button, and the first thing we want to do is check our material set before we move any further. So let's click on the set button and make sure our diameter is still three inches. Our X, Y datum is still in the lower left hand corner. Our Z zero is in the center of the cylinder. We don't have a model or any clip art, so we don't have to worry about the model position in our material. Uh, our rapid Z gaps are correct. And please ensure that these are correct for your machine as well. And I'm happy with that, so I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. Now you'll notice I got this pop-up here that is warning me that if any values have changed, that I need to recalculate it in my toolpath. But I know I haven't changed any values and I haven't changed anything in my setup form, so I can click No to recalculate those. OK, so now let's have a look at actually previewing our uh, rounding toolpath. So if I come up to the preview here for preview toolpath and click on that, we can now press the play button and have a look at what this rounded toolpath will look like. So if I just move this view so you can see what's actually going on here, so you can see that this is our square blank and it's actually going to round these corners off to get us to our three inch uh, diameter that we need. So I'm just going to pop this into view and then just hit play. And there we are. You can see it's now rounded it off to our correct three inch diameter. Okay, so let's have a look at what's actually occurring here to achieve this uh, rounded toolpath. So if I turn this rounded toolpath on, 
go to the X axis and I'm going to come up to our view options and turn off our color shaded view. Now, if I just zoom back out by scrolling backwards on the mouse wheel, you can now see that there is our toolpath on the screen. And you can also see that there's, there's essentially a square around this toolpath uh, where it's taking a stepped routine inwards to achieve that final diameter of three inches where the tool is cutting on this stepped routine as it goes inwards to achieve this diameter overall. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that if I go up to my view and turn back on the color shaded view, if you look at this X axis here, you need to make sure that your X, Y uh, plane is parallel to the flat edge of your blank. Because what can happen is if this is rotated in any way, you might end up cutting in free space or not cutting uh, your blank correctly. So you need to ensure that your stock uh, is set up with a flat edge planer to the XY plane. So at this stage, I could look at saving out my output for this project with a rotary post processor so I can uh, cut this out on a machine. And to do so, I recommend that you refer to our tutorial on saving toolpaths or our uh, guide to wrapped rotary text, which also contains a brief tutorial on how to save uh, toolpaths for rotary purposes. And with that, that concludes our tutorial on how to create a rounded toolpath. I hope you have found this very helpful and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.